All right, we're going to take a look at the fundamental theorem of calculus. So first, let's just take a look uh, and at a little exploration here. We're going to take the derivative of an integral. And this integral, notice, goes from a constant, negative power 2, up to x. And just a little notation thing, since we have x in the limit of integration, we use a different variable uh, in the integrand. So we have cosine of t dt. So first, we'll take the antiderivative. Antiderivative of cosine is sine. goes from negative pi over 2 to x. And we evaluate using those limits of integration. And now we take the derivative with respect to x. And the derivative of sine is cosine. Derivative of 1 is 0. And what we want to notice here is we're right back to where we started. We started with the derivative of the integral of cosine of t. We ended up with cosine of x. And it turns out this is something that's going to hold every time. So the fundamental theorem of calculus, part one, we've got two parts of this. Part one says that if the function is continuous, then the antiderivative, which equals the integral from some constant a to x of f of t dt, has a derivative. And furthermore, the derivative of that integral returns the function f of x. So just some things to point out here, that we have the derivative of the integral. The variable in the derivative, so in this case we have dx, matches the upper limit of integration. And the lower limit of integration is a constant. And then when we evaluate, the new variable matches the upper limit of integration. So if we're going to apply the fundamental theorem, we have to have all of these properties holding. So here was the long way, which we just did. We found that that derivative is cosine. But if we use the first fundamental theorem, we have the derivative of an integral. The variable in the derivative matches the upper limit of integration. They're both x. And the lower limit of integration is a constant. So the derivative of the integral returns the function. And we just get cosine of x. And we can skip all of that middle work. We have the derivative of an integral. The variable in the derivative matches the variable in the upper limit. The lower limit of integration is a constant, so we get 1 over 1 plus x squared. Now we have something just a little bit different. So if we go through this the long way first, just to see what we come up with, we take the antiderivative of cosine, get sine, evaluate at x squared and 0 take the derivative of that, and we have to use chain rule, we get cosine of x squared times 2x, or 2x cosine of x squared. So if we try to apply the fundamental theorem here, which we can, we just have to realize that since that upper limit of integration is x squared and not just x, we have to apply chain rule. So we plug in x squared in for t, cosine of x squared, times the derivative of x squared, and we get 2x cosine of x squared. So we can still apply the fundamental theorem, we just have to be a little bit more careful about how we do it. Okay, we have the derivative of an integral, but notice here that the limits of integration are switched around. We have the variable on bottom, and we have the constant 5 on top. But we know that if we switch the limits of integration around, we just change the sign. So this is negative derivative of the integral. And now we apply the fundamental theorem, and we just get negative 3x sine of x. Now in this case, again, we have the derivative of an integral, but neither of our limits of integration is a constant. So we can split this integral into two parts, putting a constant in there. And it turns out we can use whatever constant we want. It makes sense just to use 0, but you could use any number. It wouldn't make any difference. So we have the derivative of the integral from 0 to x squared and the integral from 2x to 0 because this is using another one of our integral rules, the integral from a to b plus b to c equals the integral from a to c. All right, switch the limits around on that second integral to put the constant on bottom. And we have to make sure we apply chain rule when we take both of these derivatives. So we plug in for the left integral, plug in x squared, the derivative is 2x. On the right integral, plug in 2x, the derivative is 2. Now we have part two of the fundamental theorem. If our function is continuous on AB, 
And if capital F is the antiderivative of little f on AB, then the integral from A to B of f of x dx is the antiderivative of f at B minus the antiderivative of f at A, which we also sometimes call the integral evaluation theorem because this gives us our method of evaluating definite integrals. And the good news is we already know this. We learned this in 5.2.